In the remote reaches of Alaska, scientists have bored a tunnel deep beneath the tundra and revealed something horrific. At this exact moment though, the incredible danger around them is sealed in permafrost. Yet that doesn't offer much comfort for the scientists. Why? Because they know that the frozen soil is starting to melt, and when the permafrost melts, it will trigger a time bomb that could have a frightening consequence for the mankind. The experts knew about the dangers going in, of course. Alaska has always been a wild and beautiful place, but a worrying secret has laid buried for thousands of years in the stunning landscape of ice and snow. And even though life has changed little over the centuries here, this secret has the potential to wreak havoc across the earth as we know it today. But what could this time bomb beneath the Alaskan wilderness be? Well, outside Fairbanks, the state's second largest city, scientists have made some troubling revelations. In the 1960s, researchers from the US Army decided to dig a deep tunnel close to Fairbanks and there they discovered far more than they could bargain for. Apparently, the military's goal was to study the natural phenomenon known as permafrost. What's permafrost? This is a catch-all term for the type of frozen ground that covers some 85% of the entire state. It's basically soil that's frozen solid. So why is this important? According to scientists, permafrost impacts around 25% of the Northern Hemisphere. Consisting of substance such as gravel, sand, and soil, permafrost typically occurs when the ground remains at freezing temperatures for more than a couple of years. And permafrost doesn't just appear on land, either. It can also be found beneath the depths of our planet's oceans. That's where it can cause the most damage, too. As you may expect, this phenomenon is more commonly found in regions where temperatures are seldom higher than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That means there's often permafrost in Eastern Europe, Russia, China, Greenland, and Alaska. While these frozen sections may be relatively shallow in some areas, they can also stretch for more than 3,000 feet. And the bigger the permafrost, the bigger the time bomb beneath it. But there are two types of permafrost to think about. The first is called continuous permafrost because it has a single sheet of frozen ground, and this continuous permafrost is broken up into several different pieces. Pretty simple, right? But the problem comes when they start to melt, and this is happening more often than not. That's why experts believe that permafrost are dwindling. It doesn't help, of course, that the planet is warming up. For example, National Geography has claimed that during the course of the 20th century, the planet's frozen layers rose in temperature by more than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And as time goes on, the situation could only get worse. For those living in the Arctic, permafrost poses some difficult challenges. Building structures on the tundra can be tough, for example, and the heat from construction sometimes causes the ground to thaw. But humans have adapted to these conditions over time and now entire cities exist in some of the iciest corners of the Earth. When the Fairbank Tunnel was first hollowed out, the permafrost in the region had changed little in hundreds of years. Now as temperatures rise around the world, the frozen ground beneath the Arctic is getting warmer. And as these areas begin to thaw, they could kickstart a catastrophic chain of events. The tunnel is currently part of the Cold Region's Research and Engineering Laboratory, where scientists study the unique behavior of permafrost, and that includes how it may react to climate change. For experts such as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers geochemist Dr. Thomas Douglas, this work gives them the chance to take a fascinating peek into the past. You see, while some perceive the tundra as a wasteland, the permafrost is actually full of prehistoric remains that have stayed preserved in the frozen ground for thousands of years. And the evidence of this is clear in the Fairbanks Tunnel. Some visitors have even reported seeing the bones and tusks of mammoths jutting out from the walls and floors there. The permafrost is like an entire ecosystem frozen in time, bursting with the remains of long-dead life. From extinct woolly rhinoceros to ancient plants, practically everything that once walked or grew on this ground has been preserved in the frozen expanses beneath its surface. But despite the fascinating appeal of these remains, they also present a real problem. Like all other life forms, dead or alive, they're made from carbon and lots of it. In 2018, Douglas told NPR, the permafrost contains twice as much carbon as is currently in Earth's atmosphere, that is 1,600 billion metric tons. And while this carbon is currently trapped in the permafrost, Douglas and his colleagues have begun to wonder what will happen when the Arctic's frozen ground begins to melt. So the team launched an experiment to find out, and the results have hinted at an alarming trend. During the investigation, scientists drilled into the permafrost and removed sections of the ice, each one coming in at around 5 inches long and 2.5 inches across. Then the experts took the samples to a laboratory where they allowed them to slowly warm up, 
and before long, the team began to notice that something strange was happening. This is material that stayed frozen for 25,000 years, and given the right environmental conditions, it came back to life again vigorously. Amazingly, ancient bacteria had been suspended within the permafrost as temperatures rose, though they woke up and got to work. Yet, this is not the first time ancient bacteria has been reanimated after a long spell in the ice. The phenomenon is also witnessed in Russia, where according to the Daily Telegraph, some 66% of the terrain is permafrost. And unfortunately, the country is also experiencing some of the worst global warming around. In 2015, it was reported that temperatures in Russia are rising at an alarming rate. So, with so much permafrost to go around, residents have understandably long adapted to the icy conditions. In the city of Yakutsk, for example, buildings are traditionally constructed on silts that bypass the constantly melting and refreezing active zone. Unfortunately, however, warming temperatures have meant that even these dwellings have become unstable. And in this chaotic environment, the bacterium Bacteleus may have started to raise its head once more, typically associated with biological warfare. This substance leads to anthrax, a potentially lethal infection that once terrorized the frozen landscape of Siberia. According to experts, the Bacillus anthrax spores from a part of the natural reaction within the soil. When the humans come in contact with this bacteria, they may develop nasty blisters that can lead to further complications. And while some communities have gone decades without anthrax outbreaks, melting permafrost is now releasing the infection back into the world. Anthrax spores can stay alive in the permafrost for up to 2,500 years. That's pretty scary given the tying of animal burial grounds from the 19th century when they were taken out of the permafrost and put into our temperatures. They revive. According to the British newspaper, a 2011 study has identified parts of Siberia's Yakutia region where anthrax outbreaks have occurred. And alarmingly, these areas were also apparently found to be where warming was at its most extreme. In the Arctic, rising temperatures are similarly believed to be behind the first anthrax deaths there in seven decades. Back in Alaska, though, researchers noticed that the resurrected bacteria began reacting with the dead animal and plant matter stored within the permafrost transforming carbon into methane and carbon dioxide into the process. And as scientists know all too well, these are the very gases that are responsible for the climate change. Up until now, Alaska has been known for absorbing more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than it emits. But as the permafrost thaws, this process could be reversed. And if these extra carbon stores are released, it could spell disaster for the planet. Ancient bacteria hasn't been the only contributor to the release of greenhouse gases across Earth's frozen regions. Melting permafrost can also expose underground reservoirs to the open air about, and methane can be expelled into the atmosphere through these new pathways. And while experts still concede that human activity is the biggest producer of greenhouse gases, melting permafrost is fast becoming a revival contender. It's actually believed that the phenomenon has resulted in the annual release of between 1.2 and 2.2 million tons of emission in recent years. For context, permafrost top produces as much greenhouse gases as the entire nation of Japan, according to the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. And as the 21st century progresses, experts believe that the volume of carbon released in the fashion will continue to grow. Incredibly, these numbers are even expected to overtake those of the United States. At present, the second biggest carbon dioxide producer in the world. So, what exactly happens when the large amounts of gases find their way into the atmosphere? Well, the outbreak appears grim from a climate change perspective. Essentially, substances such as carbon dioxide radiate energy downwards, thus warming the planet, and while such a process is necessary, one, its effects have been accelerating in recent years. If more carbon is released from melting permafrost, then it will exacerbate a situation that is already spiraling out of control. In fact, experts believe that our planet may heat up by as much as 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next 100 years. And if this scenario comes to pass, Earth will look very different from the planet we know today. Scientists are currently unsure as to how big of an impact this geological time bomb might have been. For example, if there is a thaw, erosion could cause much of the resulting carbon to be washed away by the Arctic's oceans. A warmer environment may also help new vegetation spring up across the tundra, and this flora in turn is likely to reabsorb some of the harmful gases. In the long run, though, there is little doubt that climate change will drastically alter the world we inhabit. And while we are yet to see just how much of an impact melting permafrost will have on this world, 
the phenomenon has already begun and has noticeable effect on Earth's frozen landscapes. Essentially, permafrost acts like an adhesive by sticking together the layers of rocks and minerals that make up the surface of our planet. Then, when this melts, the landscape may shift dramatically. Almost overnight, lakes can empty, rivers can change direction and shorelines can disintegrate. And in places where frozen water makes up more than three quarters of the ground, the consequences have been extreme. In Alaska, for example, the melting permafrost has caused a drastic change in the local terrain. Areas that were once thick with vegetation have now flooded with melted water. In other locations, conversely, plants were previously stunned are now thriving in thawed grounds. In the Northwest Territories of Canada, meanwhile, researchers observe a cliff that collapsed as a result of melting permafrost. And as the rocks crumbled, the specialists noted that a resulting waterfall drained a nearby lake, emptying some 800,000 gallons of water in two hours. Yes, these dramatic fluctuations can occur in a surprisingly short amount of time. And according to Third Sky, we should take such developments such as warnings. In 2019, as told by the Anchorage News Daily, it can happen super quickly, even in a matter of months. This has been a wake-up call to the climate science community. Ultimately, no one can be sure what the full effects of the thawing permafrost could be. Yet it's this uncertainty that troubles experts. And although these experts believe the measures must be taken to curb human-created emissions and so hopefully stave off environmental disaster, the worry remains that it could all be too little too late.